Hey, what's up? So this is part two of a little thing about the 3D warp tool in Avid. So I showed you last time mainly about how I use them with position, right? So I just want to go over a couple other little tricks and type things I would use. One thing, remember, you can use all these things together. So if I wanted to crop this image all in one, right? I don't have to drag and drop different effects. And I have this box right here. And then I wanted to blow up the whole box for some reason. But one thing I wanted to show that's really cool is you could put a 3D warp inside a 3D warp. And so now I have what I did here was crop. I have this box. And then if I go back here and I add another new 3D warp, not the 3D warp that I just made. And the same thing, I can increase the Z position the way I showed you last time and fill that box it's sort of like a Mac key. It's almost, uh, you know, inside the box, you can do whatever you wanted to. And then I still have the 3D warp above, in which case I can move it right, left, and even make it bigger or whatnot. So just think about the options with that. The 3D warp inside a 3D warp gives you a lot of flexibility. A couple other things to think about here. You can use, instead of going to the monitor, hitting control L and control key, you can use this magnifying glass. It's actually even quicker than going to the keyboard, which I wouldn't say, but going to a control K or a control L will take my two hand off the mouse, as opposed to just using this right here. There's a lot of things I don't use in this 3D warp tool. Number one is I don't use the dual split. If you ever wind up in this situation, um, it's this button right here. I don't see it being very helpful as far as, as, as compositing goes. Skew, perspective, a lot of these very, very rarely used in my book. Another one which I really do not like to use at all is this border. Same thing with the highlight. You could you could do some sort of sort of a little light on anything like that. But I, I personally wouldn't spend much time learning this, even though you probably could get it to, to get to a satisfactory level. I would spend the time in After Effects. One thing I would say is absolutely the drop shadow. Right, so I have this box over some other video, but if I didn't have the shadow on it, which I can show on and off with this little button right here. So this looks like old 2D video. You need to have a drop shadow to create depth. You want to have depth whenever you're doing anything video related. You don't want that old school 80s 2D look. Um, the other, other things I would use, I, instead of like dragging and dropping a superimpose, you have this option of the foreground it's called. You can mode a little bit. Uh, trail and stamp are really old school kind of effects. Maybe you could do something cool with it. You know, that's that's one thing that's interesting about editing. You could probably do something with one of these effects and it would have like an old school look and then it would be like the coolest new effect ever that you could own and, and take credit for, even though it's an old school look. Um, I'm not going to go over the corner pin now. That might be for something like if you were trying to put this box into a phone. All right, and just to go over some 3D warps that I guess I used enough that I felt that I could save them in a bin, not have to recreate them over and over. Uh, so I already have made these boxes center, right, and now, right. I have a three box look. Oh, I even had the move on it. So I have a keyframe on it, right? Zero, it's off screen, 14, it's moving there. And then, and then whatever, it's at some point it landed. But that's actually a good look. I probably haven't used this in a while. But I think boxes with the black border in between, I think, is, is an awesome look. And that's even before uh, Zoom videos became a thing. I have a slow push in. I call it bump, move up, down. The camera's moving in very slowly. Uh, one, one, one moving from in Z position from 14 to zero and one moving from zero to 14. One of my favorite effects, I've probably saved this one for like 15 years, is a, what I call push in. And it is a camera move I'm in, ca in an avid pushing into the camera. Now, of course, when you use this, you might blow up the video enough to the point where it looks like, in which case you do not want to use that. So those are just some of the ones that I use all the time. I should have made a bin for uh, anybody to download, but I guess I was just too lazy. If you're interested in having a bin with these moves on it, uh, email me at avidbeer at gmail.com. And I think now I have a little treat for everybody. Uh, you know, I'm an editor, so I really do not want to be on camera whatsoever. But people have asking, been asking me to show pictures of myself. So I wanted to show this picture right here. 
This is from a family camping trip I took. It might have been uh, maybe upstate New York, Pennsylvania, maybe the Poconos. But it looks like I sure had a good time on that trip, doesn't it? And as far as beer goes, I am back to drinking Founders, Mosaic Promise. I think it's one of those things where it's like a seasonal type of uh, beer that they make only once in a while. I was so happy to see it in my store. Pretty inexpensive as far as IPAs go, and I love that Mosaic hops. And it is also a session IPA, which which helps keep me from getting sloppy and it helps keep me from getting extremely hungover the next day. So I really hope you got something out of these two 3D Warp videos. Go to avidbeer.com to take the 2018 course. The 2020 course is coming soon and I appreciate anyone who subscribes to this channel. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video.